we'll see if this trap has an animal in it, and if it does, then we'll close the gate on it. Brian Wright has learned to be a little sneaky when he's trapping sea lions. They're smart, but he can lure them in with a comfortable resting place. This is a California sea lion, one of about a half a dozen up here at the falls right now, predating on the listed winter steelhead run. Twenty years ago, only a couple sea lions bothered to swim this far upriver. But as the West Coast sea lion population grows, so do the numbers here. Now, dozens of them swim up every year. They're built for swimming, they're built for exploring, they're looking for food. And so just by happenstance, some animals are gonna find this place. And what we've found based on the marks that we apply to them is that once they do find it, they come back year after year after year. The Limit Falls and the adjoining dam are both major bottlenecks for salmon swimming upriver. That makes this a great place for sea lions to go fishing. One sea lion even found his way into the fish ladder. Last year, sea lions at Willamette Falls ate a quarter of a winter steelhead run that was already down to just 500 fish. To save these threatened fish, Wildlife managers have asked for permission to kill some of these sea lions. They don't have an answer yet. In the meantime, we felt we had to do something um, because the run is so poor and the sea lion problem is, is getting bigger. So, for lack of better options, this sea lion is getting a free ride to Newport, courtesy of the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. Once he's trapped, he still has a long way to go. First, he hops on a barge. Here, he'll get an ID tag and a lift to the nearby boat ramp. His next ride will be a bit longer. It's more than 200 miles to the central Oregon coast. So now we're transferring the animal from the barge onto the truck. Normally, shuffling a 500-pound sea lion from a dock to a barge to a pickup truck would be crazy. Even crazier, driving that sea lion more than 200 miles away to Newport. But usually they use a little bit of noise, tapping the sticks, prodding them a little bit. This one's never gone through it before, so he's being a little stubborn. There he comes. Now the sea lion is off on a one-way ticket that Wright says will buy the fish some time. For every day this sea lion isn't at the falls, he saves two to three fish from getting eaten. Not something that anybody does every day. And you have this four or five, 600 pound sea lion in the back of the truck and no, nobody really knows, you know, driving by what we have back there since it's sort of covered up. The first time I did it, I was a bit white knuckled on the whole trip. Why Newport? Wright says it's far enough to keep the sea lions away for a while, but it's close enough for him to do the drive in a one day road trip. I just want to let you know we're going to be releasing a California sea lion. Okay. So it's great that your dog's on the leash. <laughs> It'll probably take about five minutes to get ready, but when we do, it's going to make a beeline. So I just don't want it to startle you. Even as they're releasing these sea lions, managers know it's just a matter of time before they swim right back. And it's a pretty long swim, first along the coast, then up the Columbia River, and on to the Willamette. But one sea lion made the 230-mile trip in just four days. Another one swam back and got trapped a second time. 
so he got two trips to the coast. <laughs> All right, hey, turn around. See the ocean? Go! Ridiculous? All right. Maybe. Took a second to look back. <laughs> Looking good. Oh, he's loving it now. <laughs> Looks like a bear. <laughs> but managers say it's the only option they have right now to save some fish. There he is. He's he headed north. He took it right, yeah. He's headed north. This time around, the sea lions are getting off easy. As soon as the state has approval to kill sea lions at Willamette Falls, they plan to use their traps for lethal removal, not just a ride to the beach. With the sea lions around, it's almost guaranteed that at least one population of winter steelhead will go extinct. Without them, the chances of extinction drop to nearly zero. All right, he's ready to go. But killing sea lions won't solve all the problems these fish are facing. Yeah, perfect fish. That one's about out. The salmon and steelhead that do make it over Willamette Falls without getting eaten by sea lions still have 12 dams standing in the way of their spawning grounds. And none of those dams have fish ladders. 66, uh, I'm gonna go male. Okay. Little slight abrasion on a snout. Okay. So managers have to collect the fish below each dam and help them get upstream. That's everybody. Here, they sedate the fish and move them into a holding tank that drains into a truck. Sea lions aren't the only wildlife getting trucked around Oregon. Well over half the salmon and steelhead in the Willamette River Basin, tens of thousands of fish get driven around dams every year. It's the only way they'll make it. So right now, what you see in essence is a huge roadblock for these fish. And the big nut to crack is how do we help these fish get around the dams? Dams on the Willamette were built for flood control and they're too tall for regular fish ladders and spillways. Many Willamette dams are more than 200 feet tall. That means a fish ladder would stretch on for more than a third of a mile, a total length of nearly seven football fields. And while dam managers puzzle over better options, sea lions are eating more and more of the fish downstream. Fish managers say killing sea lions is the best way to save fish now, before it's too late. It's a pretty simple equation for the winter steelhead right now. Their numbers are so low that they're losing so many here at the falls, you know, 15 to 25% of the run, that if we don't do this, they're gonna go extinct. 